this presentation, I will give some more examples and exercises for process modeling and EPC diagrams. Here is a small exercise. Please read the text and try to sketch a solution before continuing. Here is a solution. Note first that any EPC diagram must start and end with an event. Here the start event is order arrived. After this event comes an AND split and we move into two sub-processes that are carried out in parallel. One sub-process is about checking the creditworthiness of the customer and the other one is about checking the availability of the goods order. So let's first look at the first sub-process to the left. One outcome is that the credit isn't okay, if so the order is rejected and the process stops. Similarly, if the goods aren't available, the order will also be rejected and the process stops. But there is also a happy path where both credit and goods availability are fine and in this case, we arrive at the end joint, which allows the process to continue with confirm order where the process stops. An EPC diagram may also contain symbols for organizational units, which are shown as yellow ellipses. An organizational unit is a part of an organization that is responsible for carrying out certain functions. For example, in this figure, the financial department is responsible for performing the credit checks and the warehouse department is responsible for performing goods availability checks. Here is a slightly larger exercise. Please read the text and try to sketch a solution before continuing. Here is the start of the solution. First, a registration request arrives from a student and it's handled in the function register. When the student has been registered, she will take her first lesson and an organizational unit here called teachers is responsible for the lesson. When the lesson has been completed, there are two alternatives, so we get an OR split. Either the student is pretty clever now, so she's ready for the exam, and the right sub-process is taken. Or the student is not so good, she needs to take more lessons, and the left sub-process is taken. This means the function take lesson is performed for the student once again. If the right sub-process is chosen, the student will first take an exam. This is a function for which the unit examiners is responsible. When the exam has been taken, the next function is to make a decision about the outcome of the exam. Did the student succeed or fail? In fact, there are three alternatives here, so we get an OR split with three sub-processes. The rightmost one is the successful case the student succeeds in the exam and finishes her studies. The two other ones are the fail cases. The one at the bottom represents the case where the student fails the exam and she gives up. That is, she finishes the studies without having passed the test. In the leftmost case, the student also fails the exam, but she doesn't give up. Instead, she goes back and takes more lessons and later on, she will take a new exam. This figure shows a historical perspective on the development of software systems for supporting systems and application design. In the early days, the 1960s, an application developer only had the operating system as a basis. She had to build everything else herself on top of this operating system. But it soon turned out that the developer did a lot of repetitive work when it came to data management, such as creating index files, searching and retrieving data, ensuring persistence of data, managing transactions, etc. 
but all these talks were quite similar across different applications. So the idea of database management systems was born. And the application developer now had access also to such a system for handling basic data management tasks. Then it became clear that developers also spent much time on user interface programming, such as screen elements, interaction, dialogues, which were also very similar across applications. So user interface management systems were introduced to help developers becoming more productive. Application developers also noted that to spend much effort on process management tasks, like routing work between actors, taking decisions on process flow, ensuring synchronization of parallel flows, and so on. In order to help with these tasks, business process management systems were introduced, or workflow management systems, as they're also called. So we can see a development where the application developer gets access to more and more intermediate systems for handling tasks that occur across different applications. And these systems, they help with data management, user interface, and process flow.